If you're looking on how to make an 8-port LED distro, you've come to the right place. My name is Aaron and hopefully I can help you guys out or steer you in a direction on how to make one of these. This is how I've made one. I've made a few of these and have been real successful with it. I'm going to walk you step by step all the way through the process from the beginning to end. Um, starting with this first one, you can kind of see some of the tools that I'm using and some of the things that I need. And let's just jump right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is take a, some blue tape, put it on the top here, and get going to mark on our blue tape of our different spots where we're going to drill our holes. So we're going to measure here, and I'm using my calipers, and I'm going to go ahead and make my holes about 0.8 inches apart here. And so the tape has made kind of a natural line here, so I'm going to go ahead and go about 0.8 inches apart here. Let's go ahead and draw a line follow that tape line since it's nice and straight. Now I'm going to do two more holes on the right hand side here. The top hole is going to be for my data and the bottom is for power. So I followed those same lines to keep everything nice and even. And I like to keep the data and the power separate. That's why I put the data on top and keep the power separate from uh, by putting it on the bottom here. All right, so there's our eight holes for our pigtails going out to the LED lights. And the other side here, there's our power and our data hole. All right, next we're going to install these cable strain reliefs. This is a PG7. We get these from wiredwatts.com. They come in two different types a PG-7 and a PG-9. The PG-7 is the smaller one. We basically unscrew the nut that comes off the back of them, put them in the mounting holes, uh, the half-inch ones that we just drilled, and put the nut on the back of them there. Okay, our last one that we're going to get, this is a PG-9. The PG-9 is a little bit bigger than a PG-7, so you can kind of see the thicker cable. PG-9 is going to have our power cable coming in. So go ahead and put that on the same way you put the others. And last but not least, we're going to go ahead and mount this Cat5 cable pass-through. So next what we're going to do is take this peel and pluck foam that came in the case that we purchased from Apache and we're going to go ahead and peel back a couple inches so that our pigtails have somewhere to go inside the box as well as our power cable and our Cat5 cable that those have space so they can bend up into the box here. Next, we need to cut out the foam for our power supply. You see I laid in here, kind of trace it out with my fingers. 
We're going to go ahead and pluck all that foam out now. I picked up some tails from wiredwatts.com. These are the Ray Wu type connectors. These are the females that we're going to be putting into our pigtails here. I also picked up some labeled heat shrink that they offer. Um, it's yellow. I picked the color, so all my 5 volt things are yellow. And it's also labeled with 5 volts on it. And it also labels the ports from 1 to 8. On this particular box, what I've done is the top left is port number one, and the bottom right is port number eight. So I go one through four on the top, and five through eight on the bottom. Now as you feed these through, make sure you're leaving a little bit of a length to work with as we go to terminate the other side here. So leave about, I don't know, about six inches um, so you've got some cable to work with um, as we terminate. So it looks like we've got all eight ports done. So we need to go ahead and make our power cable now, which is going to go in this last one over here. So let's go ahead and move, and I'll show you how we're going to make this power cable. We're going to go ahead and tie in our Edison cable now to our power supply. I had one of these cables laying around. It was a IEC cable from another project. Um, I'm going to go ahead and chop off this end because all I care about is the Edison part of it. I'm going to go ahead and strip these cables back and I'm going to go ahead and terminate the ends so that we can attach them on to our power supply. This is my 8-port LED distro that I got from a gentleman by the name of Bob Kojima. It goes by Bong69. You can buy this over at his Tendi.com store. I'll put the link in the bottom down there. And what this is, this is an 8-port uh, LED distro. It's an ESP32. 
um, and it's already been preloaded with WLED. Um, it distributes both power and data in one board there. Um, the PCB provides support for Wi-Fi or Ethernet connections, so that's real nice. And it can be used with either 5 volt, 12 volt, or 24 volt LED pixels. Um, it also includes a USB uh, USB C port uh, for easy programming there, in case you have to uh, reset anything on there. These connectors come with the board when you buy it. Um, they're Phoenix connectors. Um, there's three contacts in each connector. So you're going to be running your positive, your negative, and your signal um, through these Phoenix connectors here. Um, just take a simple, small, flat-headed screwdriver, put them in the top, and you can see how it opens those jaws up in there. You don't need to open them up all the way, you know, because you're shoving a small cable in there. But go ahead and get them all set. You're going to open up. The three jaws there, um, and that's how you're going to terminate your cable. Now, this is an important step here. You want to make sure your Phoenix connector is orientated the correct way before you start putting your cables in. So go ahead and fit that Phoenix connector back on the PCB board there. And you're going to look just underneath it and it's going to tell you which one is your negative, your signal, and your positive. So once when you look in there, you're going to make sure those wires are going in the correct way before you screw those terminals down. So just double check this part because you don't want to have to go back and redo all these um, and make it right the first time. So once again, just do a dry fit and look on there and make sure your caper is going in the correct positions. So now that we got all of our tails terminated to our Phoenix connectors, we also have our Edison that's terminated and ready to go in to our power supply. We need to go ahead and get a jumper from our power supply up to our PCB board. And this is where those um, extra cables that I had laying around, uh, we're going to go ahead and use those. I just took two cables, put them on the end of a drill, and held the other end and uh, made the drill go and it spun the cables and that's how you get them to spin like that. So one end we're going to terminate, the other end we're just going to leave open because that's going to go into the PCB board. So we're going to go from the power supply and then jump that up to the PCB board and that's going to provide all the power we need for our lights. Now, on our power supply board, you're going to see a few different things. You're going to see this V positive and V negative. Okay, that's your voltage output. That's your 5 volts out going in there. At the top here, you're going to see a line, a neutral, and a ground. That's your input. Okay, that's going to be coming from the Edison. So once again, this V plus and V minus, that's going to jump up to your PCB board. That's on top here. Um, and that's what we're going to use that extra cable for. And the input up here, that's going to be from the Edison. So next we've got to terminate the L, the N, and the ground. That's your Edison coming in. The L is going to be the black cable. That's your hot. Your N is going to be the white cable. That's your neutral. And your ground is going to be your green cable. Now we're going to mount our PCB board. 
to our power supply. Once again, this is the only custom piece that I have that I 3D printed. We're going to go ahead and put that on top of the power supply. Now we're going to go ahead and hook up our jumper cable from our power supply up to our PCB. Now it's time to hook our Phoenix connectors to the PCB board. Um, if you look on the board, it's going to tell you what ports are what. And so one goes to one, two goes to two, and so forth. On this board, um, he used a couple different GPIO outs. Um, and so you just need to make sure that those are going to go in order how you connect them. But one is one, two is two, and so on and so forth, all the way up to eight. Now, last thing you want to do here is just double check all your work, double check your wiring, make sure everything is wired the same, make sure all your positives and negatives are going where they're supposed to go. Plug in that Cat5. Do one last check, and then uh, it's time to plug it in and see if we've got lights. So I've got my Edison plug here. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the wall. And I'm going to check out down here, and I've got lights on my power supply. I've got lights on my PCB board, and there's no blue smoke coming out. So it looks like we did this correctly. So there you have it. That's how you build a power supply, an eight port LED power supply, out of things that you can just buy from Amazon and the web and from Harbor Freight. Hope you guys liked my video. Hope you learned something. Thanks so much.